honey skies are blue, the clouds have rolled away and the sun peeps through, they express happiness. Joy may find a thousand ways, but a case like mine needs a special phrase to reveal. I got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow, got the string around my finger. What a world, what a life right now. I got a song that I sing, I can make the rain go any time I move my finger. Loving me, can't you see I love? I do a beautiful thing. As long as I hold that string, I'd be a silly slow and slow if I should ever let go. I got the world a lost string, sitting on a rainbow, got the string around my finger. What a world, what a life I am now.
printed program in there of what we're going to do, which gives us a lot of latitude. <laughs> uh, we'll move from the lounge sort of to the uh, country now, and I'm going to put on my, my invisible cowboy hat and sing some of these great American songs, one by Cole Porter, another one uh, that you'll recognize, a traditional American song. I don't, I don't even know. It's Home on the Range. Long story. It's a long story. It's a long story. I'm not going to go into that. And then uh, another, now, <laughs> yeah, another favorite of mine, uh, uh, that we have just re recently started doing called Ragtime Cowboy Joke. <laughs> Thanks, 
Cafe Carla, and it was the first, we were asked to do a cabaret show, it was the first time we'd ever been asked to do that, and I wasn't exactly even sure what a cabaret was supposed to be, and I found out, in fact, that in the end what it is is any songs you sing where people are drinking and you're singing. <laughs> there we go. And, but I started off with uh, uh, looking at a number of songs by William Bolcom, and, and Bill Bolcom, he, he composes a variety of things, everything from opera to some, you know, cabarets. So I'm going to sing a couple of those for you tonight. But I just wanted to share one story that I, you know, every night in a cabaret, if you're there for three weeks, you just tell, talk to people. I mean, Cafe Carla is about as big as the stage in front of me. And you hear them talk, but they sometimes talk back. And, uh, and really, I mean, whoa. And, uh, and so we, th you know, you go around during the day and you think about, you tell stories about what happened. And I couldn't tell this one because I was afraid I would get somebody, uh, the, one of the elevator guys in trouble because it was about him. So we're there for three, three weeks. And 
you know, it's, if those who have stayed in that hotel, they have white gloved elevator guys who touch the button that you, you know. And so you've seen them for two and a half weeks, three weeks, close to three weeks. And we get to get on the elevator because we live in the hotel while we're there. And uh, we were in, instead of the elevator on the left, we were in the elevator on the right this time. It was a new elevator, and the guys, you know, same thing. Uh, sir, what floor? Well, six, okay. And I wanted to make conversation. I said, oh, it's interesting. This elevator is missing four floors on top. Why is that? And he said, well, you know, sir, you know, we, this is the elevator we use to take mostly luggage up and things like that, so we don't go <laughs> on top that high. And I said, oh, so what's up there? He says, oh, you know, it's uh, condos and houses and things like that. And I said, you know, that must be pretty pricey. And he says to me, oh, your career's going to have to get a lot better before you can <laughs>
like that one. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, something else that I, I am fortunate enough to be a part of, um, usually it, it, it doesn't always happen that way in the weird world of opera and our schedules, but I've been fortunate to be able to do a number of different musical theater pieces with the New York Philharmonic and a couple of uh, opera companies as well. And so I always like to touch base on these every once in a while. My first experience is with the, uh, the musical theater piece that you all know, I'm sure, Camelot. So I thought I would sing a couple of things from that. i 
songs there there are uh, this this next one is um, one that I grew to love because it was one that my grandfather loved and, it, and, it, and I like it now uh, because it reminds me a lot of him and it's one that uh, you know he was of that greatest generation and um, uh, well you'll know it when you hear it <laughs> Thank you. 
this last piece is a traditional Irish tune that I, I love, and it's called Parting Glass. Good night and joy. 